Good evening, data science nerds, and welcome back to Stanford University, where we're here celebrating International Women's Day with live coverage all day long of the Women in Data Science Worldwide Summit. The event's been going on for nine years, and we've been playing a role for more than half of that. Very excited to be here. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube. Our last segment tonight is a very exciting one. I am thrilled to welcome to the show, Emiko, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Have you had a beautiful day today? You holding up all right? I mean, it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it's a great company here, so <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> yes, and, and you've been a part of this community for a little while, correct? A couple of years now, yeah. Yeah, so what does it mean for you to be here and get to hang out with all of your peers? You know, like on an everyday basis, I don't really interact with other women's really like. I bet. <laughs> so it's kind of, I have one other female coworker, but that's it. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to see a room full of other data practitioners. It's refreshing. It's, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we, we look at the data, 20% of students, only 10% of decision makers in data science are female. You and I both know the odds are not necessarily in our favor yeah. when we look around the room. So it is great to be absolutely surrounded by this brilliant group of people. You are a data scientist at V2 Solutions. Just in case the audience isn't familiar, what does V2 Solutions do? It's a service provider, so like we provide um, consulting, also like just services in digital transformation aspect of it. Like I'm more in the data science aspect, obviously. Uh, I primarily work with clients and primarily one client um, in real estate, and I do a lot of their data, like I meet their data needs, whatever that may be, right, so. Can you give us some examples of the types of data needs, and it doesn't have to just be the real estate folks you're working with, if, although if you can disclose about that, that would be awesome. What are some of the data needs that people come to you with? Yeah, it's like a lot of it is honestly, um, well, we need these reports, but like they don't have the technical skills to like put together the data from that not necessarily are in like one database, right? Like it could be in the right. database, it could be somewhere else. And um, so like they don't necessarily know how to put it together to m make the report. So like that's where I like, come in, like yeah, okay, I could do that for you and like just make that happen. So. I see a lot of that and I see a lot of like also like data pipelines in order mm -hmm. to make that those reports happen, right? Like they need to happen. So And they need to be clean data, it's gotta be mm -hmm. yeah, I mean I bet you're helping people evaluate whether or not they even have a solution potential with the current mm -hmm. data they have existing. Yeah, and like a lot of it is also like help you know, a little bit of consulting in a sense that like maybe you should think about this, <laughs> right? Like right. I mean I, at the end of the day it's the client's decision whether they will take that or not, but I feel like that's part of my role, like make suggestions so that you know they may think about it. I bet you're doing a lot of education as well. I hope that I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you're, you're probably teaching some of your clients ab about how to even think about these problems and, and what's possible. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, like I hope that I'm making a difference in you know, with my work. <laughs> yeah. And making things better, like, for what's to come for the companies. It certainly sounds like you are. You started in the lab. Correct. Doing research and and lab work uh, that you shifted a little bit in your career. Tell me about how you approach that, how that currently plays into your existing role. Yeah, so, like I was a lab scientist research in academia. Um, I built my career, my identity essentially in that, so. What were you studying when you were doing that? Or what were you researching? Uh, microbial evolution. Wow. <laughs> and genetics, like, yeah. Yeah. So, very niche, obviously, and like different. Um, when I, in my latest, like the last lab position I had, I always tell people that I studied pond scum. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean. <laughs> it is what it, I studied. <laughs> um, but anyway, like the research was, it was great. I loved it. But, um, you know, like I didn't love all aspects of it. And what I started thinking about when I decided, okay, I want to move away from this lab setting. What can I do next? It was like identifying what I liked about the research, and I came out with the data analysis portion of it. <laughs> How, was it was it challenging for for you to pivot? 
I think, yes. Um, I think a lot of it is, one is psychological, right? Like I said, I build my identity, so letting go, that is a process on its own. Mm -hmm. um, and also like convincing folks that I can do the work, Com not coming from like a straightforward background, I suppose, and like having a career essentially before like right. applying to like kind of junior roles and like convincing people that Yes, I still want that. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And that it's transferable and that you're willing to, to skill up. Has that been a worthwhile journey for you? Are you glad you made that shift? I am. Like, I, it's been, I think a lot of it is like when I stayed in this lab for so long, I think it started to become a little bit of a repetitiveness that becomes a little bit not as fun anymore. So. By changing, yes, it's like a big change, obviously. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, that's what I mean, it's huge. Not everybody yeah, yeah. Uh, has to do this drastic change, obviously, yeah. but I did. <laughs> well, but, but what I like about that is, though, you, you can always make the change. Mm -hmm. You're not saying it has to be drastic, but the point is, you had already, to your point, made a career studying pond scum. You were established and known and, and had a reputation around that, but you wanted to, to tweak it and become more creative. Was there something about digital transformation that drew you? How did you end up at V2 Solutions? So... That one's a little bit more serendipitous. <laughs> like I was like actually um, participating in a hackathon, mm -hmm. and I met my the manager that eventually hired me during that hackathon. I was just he was part of the team that I was in, and like we just chatted. Obviously, like what do you do when you do these projects? And I somehow made an impression on him. He kind of kept taps for me in over a few months later and like eventually he asked me if I'll submit my resume so I mean it's pretty cool the reason I bring that up is it shows if you show up and you participate you're there on your free time I assume doing a hackathon mm -hmm. and you meet the right you never know who you might meet and what doors that might open yeah I mean I've always uh, during that time I was trying to network a lot and you know I kept that in my head like I never know where, who I'm gonna meet like take every chance you get like right <laughs> talk to everybody that will talk to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and even the ones who won't no <laughs> I mean I can't really twist somebody's arm to talk to me but like uh this is also like in the height of pandemic so people are actually pretty willing to talk to others on zoom and taking so, advantage of the opportunity so yeah. whenever they say yes like I'll talk to you even for 15 minutes I was like yes Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll take that. Yeah. So I talked to a lot of folks during that time and trying, just trying to also, like I said, I come from a biology background. I didn't know where I fit in the, in the data science world necessarily. So like also exploring a little mm -hmm. bit of what's out there. Like in that sense, like I'm, a, I'm totally naive of what can be possible, right? Like I don't actually know. Um, so... There was like a twofold, like, yeah, yeah well, I want a job, but also at the same time, like, just a general curiosity, what is out there, what draws my attention. Uh, and it also drives, like, you know, what other things I want to learn later. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and you bring up a really good point. You don't know what you don't know, and your curiosity is what was able to drive you to, to discover. Mm -hmm. Where where is there any, now I'm just curious, speaking of curiosity, is there anywhere, is there anything you're curious to learn next? Oh, you know, that's a good question. Just, I have too many interests, I think. That's like well, I suffer from this as well. Uh, but but give, me, give us a couple of them. And they don't have to be related to your job. I'm just curious as a, as a human. So just because, like, I was, you know, looking at the talks today and, like, mm -hmm. some of those. Um, I do care a lot about do using data for good causes. And those mm -hmm. kind of things really draw my attention. And those uh, vision projects that they were using for detecting uh, trafficking, that was like really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, we talked to them earlier today, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fascinating. So, and it's like, yeah, it's completely fascinating and it's like also a hard work that... You're but, getting data on a population that is people are trying to make invisible. Right. It's an extraordinary challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't necessarily have to go like to vision because I'm not a vision that's not my background obviously mm -hmm. I'm more shine in the actual data <laughs> yeah in two dimensional data sets like those kind of things are just like what my specialty is like that's what I've always worked with right so 
Um, but it kind of makes me think, it's like, oh, how can I use my skills to help those causes, right? Yeah. Those but are the kind of things that like draw my attention. It's like I want to generalize it because, like, <laughs> in terms of technology, there's so many things I want to learn. I but think that's a, I think that's a great way of, of of pulling it together, though. I mean, we we also talked about the the UN uh, uh, human security goals and a lot of the different sustainability initiatives that that all folks here as well as around the world are all committed to. To your point. In, and when we were, we're sitting here in the heart of the Silicon Valley, there's yeah. a lot of brain power here, and, and it doesn't all go to tech for good. Right. And that is, I think, one of the great misses to a degree of, of what we do here. Yeah, and it's I love that you're, you're plotting, because I can tell from just talking to you for a few minutes and even your past, curiosity is going to drive what, whatever happens next. <laughs> and so even, even if that's working with the clients that you currently have with your job, you can help them to make good technological decisions, not just for the efficient mm -hmm. for the organization, but using tech for good. Yeah. That's more inclusive and thoughtful. Yeah, it's like, a lot of it is like, how to, this is kind of how I see a little bit of my role now and like, hopefully into the future as well, like, however I progress is like, helping decision makers make decisions with the data, but in a way that I feel like it shows well, it's a for-profit company, obviously. Profit is like what's most important, but also it's like show like, okay, this is the profit that you could drive, but is, are there any consequences if there's that? Like, I want to be able to have the courage to bring that to the table mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think being a data scientist requires a level of bravery? Because <laughs> sometimes I feel like you might be be aware of a truth that people around you might not want to know. Yes, I think, yeah, in that case, yes. Um, I think also I tend to be like very persistent and patient in convincing people, mm -hmm. like slowly. Okay, I can this see this in you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just not going to take no for an answer and well, resilient. It, yeah. It's more like eventually like... I know you're gonna change your mind if I say it enough times. Right. Um, it's not necessarily <laughs> like that. I'm not like gonna be yelling. That's not my personality. No. But like it's more of a, I'm gonna bring him up every chance I get if it's mm -hmm. appropriate. Yeah. No, I think that I think that's fantastic. We've got a lot of very empowered women in data science here in in the building today. Uh -huh. Four hundred plus, I believe. What is your advice for a woman of any age who might be considering a career in data science? You know, like, you bring up a point in curiosity. I think it is kind of keeping that curiosity and kind of willingness to take any challenge. Mm -hmm. I feel like research, that research for me, it's what kind of gives me that power a little bit. Like, you know, not being, being comfortable with unknown a little bit because like in research, it's like, yeah, nobody knows what I'm doing, right? Like, I yeah. need to figure it out. Right. And like, for me, that is a strength. And if somebody out there feels like, oh yeah, I'm not afraid to try something new, I think that's a power to you. Yes, absolutely, love that, bring the curiosity. What's your advice to the allies in our network looking to empower women like us? Keep them close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And encourage each other. So I'm also part of like Women in Big Data. It's a different sister organization. Yeah. And um, I recently started as a uh, Bay Area co-director. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to also you know, help others the way I was helped during this process. And like, you know, maybe I could help somebody else like yeah. enter this world. Science has always been, obviously I, I was a biologist doing data science, but I feel like I always be going to be a scientist no matter where I am. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. We need more scientists, quite <laughs> frankly. Yeah. And final question for you today is it's very clearly the end of the day, and we can see that the hall just let out. The energy is buzzing. Everyone's heading to a reception after a brilliant day of collaboration. It's International Women's Day, and we're celebrating. Is there anyone you would like to give a shout out to or say thank you to that's helped you on your journey? Oh, there's a lot of people, but I just say my mom. I feel like she always encouraged 
me to like pursue anything I wanted. Like it's not, there's never been like, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I feel like anybody that is out there like needs at least one person that has a unwavering belief in like whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter whether I understand it. Like my man has never understood what I've done, what I do, but. Mine doesn't either, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she still was, uh, she was still smiling, encouraged whatever I, choices I've made. You don't have to understand something to understand that it matters to the people you love and to tell them that you're proud of them. Yeah. So I'm sure your mother is a very proud shout out mom. Shout out to my <laughs> mom while we're at it. Amiko, thank you so much for thank being so much. on the show. You're an absolutely fantastic guest. And thank all of you for tuning in to our full day, nine <laughs> interviews of coverage here at Stanford University at the Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Event on International Women's Day. My name is Savannah Peterson. Thanks for tuning into theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise check and Baller Women News.